Hey guys, John here. Today we're in the Arturia CS80 V4, and in today's video, we're gonna concentrate on how to make those nice classic and smooth ARPs that work for just about anything retro sounding. So here we go, we're gonna make something kind of like this. And what a better pattern to make than that. Okay, so basically it's not difficult at all to make, but there's a couple things we do have to keep in mind. So this synth is enormous, so bear with me with these two different instances here that we're gonna have to swip, swip, switch back and forth. So I don't even know if that's a word. Anyway, let's get into it here. So let's go to a new preset here and let's kind of look at a couple things that we're doing. So basically we're gonna be using just one saw wave and you can use square, it's totally up to you, but this is basically just how to make this one, right? Okay, so basically, let's go to our main one here and kind of take a look and see what's happening. So we have our sound wave here, and what else are we adding here? So we're not going to be adding any noise. You can, but I didn't do that for this patch. We're not using any high-pass filtering or the resonance here, but we are using the low-pass, and this is going to be at 147, and the resonance at 0 0.640. So let's dial in the low-pass at 147 here. All right, so pretty low here. And then our resonance is going to be at 0 0.640. Pretty close here. Okay. Now we need to adjust some stuff here. So the attack level is going to be all the way up. And then our decay is going to be at 549. And keep in mind, if you want more of that like boinkiness or whatever you want to call it, I don't even know if there's a word for that, then that's where you want to go and reach for the resonance there. Okay, so now we need to kind of look at the amplifier envelope here. So our decay is 794. And then our release here is going to be 78. So... Okay, 78, something like that. And I don't believe we have any release here for that because this is kind of a quick sound, so two milliseconds. I think that's kind of default, yeah. Okay, so now what we can do, we know this is gonna be an ARP, so we might as well just turn that on now. So that's gonna be down here at the bottom. And right now I'm in 96 BPM and the actual speed here is going to be one over 16, but you can always change that if you'd like. So let's go ahead and turn that on. And this is going to be, if we click this button here, um, exclusive. So basically the notes go up and then down. They don't do that sticky thing where the lower end and the top end of the notes repeat themselves. So let's go ahead and add that here. So let's play a chord and let's turn on our ARP here. Now we do want to have this synced because we want to sync it with our tempo, right? That kind of makes sense, but you don't have to if you want to do something different here. So our speed is 1 over 16, so that's what we do here. Our octaves are 1, and then this mode, let's drag this all the way down to exclusive. So we have something like that, and if we played that uh, chord here, we get that functionality. Okay, so for the most part, this is gonna be set up here. So now we're actually gonna be using two oscillators and the easy way to do that is by pressing this button here and we're gonna be copying the first channel to the second one. So over here on our version or the one that we're making, we can go to the center panel and drag this down right here, click this button and it's gonna copy all the settings we just did for the top to the bottom, which is very helpful. And we do wanna blend this in with this mix knob. So for this one, we blended this in at 0.424 and we did drop this down the first one, we brought that down one octave. So let's bring this down an octave and bring this down. Maybe somewhere that feels right. And even this here, we're getting actually pretty close here. We have a couple of things here, so let's go ahead and turn off our effects for now. And then I also have some external reverb that we can for now disable. So we're gonna be changing a couple things there. Okay, so basically, we have a couple different knobs to kind of look at. So we have this Brill and this Res here next to the mix, right? So at the moment, this is gonna be zero, which I believe is the same for this guy over here, but our resonance, we can change this. So this is 0.616. have something kind of like that here. I think we, do we increase the volume negative 5.41? Is this the same here? No, we did increase the volume. Okay, 
Nah, that's close enough. Okay, so something that I did here on the mod wheel. So basically, if we move our mod wheel, what we notice is that this sub oscillator that's moving at 4.69 hertz is actually going to be changing a couple of things here. So if we have our mod wheel all the way up, it's going to be affecting the pan pretty substantially and a little bit of the actual VCO or the pitch here. So take a listen as I move the mod wheel up here once we play this track. So if we want that kind of functionality, right? What we really have to do is we go over here to our synth here, and it's gonna be already pretty much mapped here, but we do have to adjust some things here. So this VCO that we did here is gonna be 0.421, and this guy right over here is a little bit too much, so we bring this down to 0.41, something kind of like that. So once we increase this, We have a little bit of pitch modulation, and then we can bring this panning all the way to the bottom so it moves left and right through the stereo field. And we have something pretty much like that. And if it's a little bit too much pitch modulation here, you can always adjust that to taste. And uh, yeah, there you go for that one. Okay, so it's pretty close here. Okay, so now we should go and talk about the effects a little bit. So let's go to our advanced sections for both of these, and let's take a look at our effects and see what's happening. So here what we're doing is a tape echo into a chorus into another tape echo because especially with these kind of sounds, there's a lot of effects and there's a lot of things moving around as far as delays go. So let's turn these first two off for now and kind of just look at this tape echo. So what we're doing here is going one over four. And we're adjusting the fine a little bit by 0.149. So let's go ahead and adjust that here, point. When I say 0.149 or 0.419, what is that? 0.149. Okay, something like that. And bring in our dry wet, which is pretty kind of high for this, but it's kind of a cool sound. So 26.4%. We're going to be in one over four. We can increase the stereo spread as well, just a little bit. Okay, so next up we have the chorus. Of course, just makes everything sound better. So go to the chorus here, and I think we do we change any of these. I don't know. I don't think we did really too much on those, but we did bring back the dry wet. So we're gonna be here on twenty three point two. For these kind of sounding arps, this synth is perfect for that. Okay, next up we have another tape echo. Now this one is gonna be one over eight and kind of a similar thing, but we're gonna be going full 100% on the stereo width. So let's go ahead and add that here. So let's click this here and the tape echo. So we know we're gonna go full in stereo width and time sync's gonna be one over eight. And what is our dry wet going to be? We are, I guess, 32, that's fine. And then ping pong. So ping pong and then about 32. <laughs> If we played our uh, fun little tune here. We have something like that, and that's pretty close to how this is going to sound here. Okay, and one of the last things as well is to ex to add external reverb. So I've done that with this Valhalla Vintage Verb, and I kind of made a pretty close uh, <laughs> settings that I think sounds pretty cool with this in the signer. So go for, feel free to look at these values and copy them if you would like to. So let's go ahead and route those. So have this guy here and let's turn this on and route some reverb to this and we don't need too much. And that's really all it is. It's not too complicated. The synth looks complicated and it looks like there's a lot going on and it's huge. There's a lot of sliders, but it's really kind of, I guess, in, uh, I don't know. It's not really as difficult as it looks if spending a little bit of time with this guy. 
And what's really cool as well, so if we play this track back, we can adjust these brilliance and resonance master knobs here and kind of make some cool textures as the song goes by. So let's try that here. Yeah, so it's a lot of fun. These two knobs here would be nice to map like something like that to your controller or to automate or modulate these somehow you would like to, to kind of keep the patch sounding interesting and moving and changing as you uh, play whatever track it is or whatever ARP you're making. And this ARP isn't really just for this song or this melody here. There's a lot of different things you can do with this, and there's a lot of fun you can have. So if you kind of want to, I guess, add on to this here, you can increase your octave if, if you like to, the play mode, something like that, and maybe also check, check out the gate. That might be kind of fun as well, something to think about there. So yeah. Hopefully you learned something. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to get this patch for free, there's a link in the video description below and it can be yours and we'll see you in the next video.